Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. So, as always, we are late with the September wrap up. Uh, I actually read 18 books. I read was Night of the Living Dummy by R.L. Stein, which is like number six or seven in the Goosebump series. Uh, I've never read a Goosebump series, it's really short. It was cute. I really enjoyed it. I feel like if I was the intended audience, which is like a lot younger, obviously, um, I would have been scared. So I think they did that. RL signed an amazing uh, five out of five book, five out of five stars on this book. Um, so we started off the month really good. Then the next book I read was a graphic novel, because I'm taking part in the Fall Into Reading Challenge, um, which I'll link my video for it up here, or in the description box, or both. But I read Poppy in the Lost Lagoon by Matt Kent and Brian Hurt. So, it's just this really cute adventure graphic novel. Gave this five stars as well. I just thought it was a, an adorable read, honestly. Then I read Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist. Um, I read this and... Naomi and Ellie's No Kiss List on the same day. I did not like them. Nora's Infinite Playlist was like it takes place in one night and it's got like insta love and fall in love and they fall in love in one night even though he's just trying to make his ex-girlfriend jealous and she's just trying to make that same girl jealous and I gave it one star which I don't give out one star I think I gave out three one stars this month which is a lot for me I usually at least give my books two stars Naomi and Ellie's no kiss list just didn't work at all for me so I only gave that one one star neither of these are five stars but I kept them because they're really entertaining and I did enjoy reading them they just weren't quite five star material for me. So I read Cut by Patricia McCormick, which is about this girl named Callie who cuts herself, but she doesn't do it uh, very deep and she doesn't think she has a problem, but she gets sent to this rehab center residential treatment facility, excuse me. Um, and she goes silent. She stops talking. It's a really, it's a small story. It's short. It's a really good read. I enjoyed it. Next book I read was The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. In this book, you're following this little puppy. Okay, he's not really little, but the, you're following this puppy. Oh my gosh, why can't I remember it? Enzo, who kind of follows his, his owner is a race car driver, so he's away from home a lot, and then something happens to his wife, and he has to take custody of his daughter and his dog, and this is kind of through heartbreak and tears, sometimes a little bit of laughter, how the dog perceives the situations that are going on in your life. The next one was actually a three star and I typically don't keep three star books, but I think it was cute and it will be cute for my kiddos when I start teaching. So I'm going to keep it on my shelf. I probably won't read it again unless I'm reading it to my class. And I don't even know 
Okay, right now I'm thinking I'm going to teach kindergarten, so this might be a little bit too old for my class, but I have a goal of wanting to read all of Roald Dahl's books, so if I keep them on my shelf as I read them, regardless of if I love them or not, then at least I'll know which ones I've read. So it's the BFG, the big friendly giant. I thought it was the big freaking giant, but it's the big friendly giant. Um. It was cute. It's about this giant who saves Sophie from the other giants and then he finds out that the other giants are going to go to the orphanage where she lives and eat the other kids and she's trying to talk him into saving the kids. There's nothing really wrong with this story. I'm just not the intended audience, so I didn't love it, but it was definitely cute. It was a short read, so if you like that, if you like short reads or middle grade, then I would give this one a shot. Next book was actually another five-star read. I read The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. It was good. I really enjoyed it. I watched... The movie you know I know the story but I had never actually read it so I got to read it it was fun the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy which I've already unhauled I did not like I did not like this book uh, I think I gave it two stars but honestly that was pretty generous I might go back and give it only one I did not like the humor in this book I it was just not for me. I don't think it's a bad book. I, I don't think really there are, I don't think there are bad books. I just think that I was not the intended audience. I did not like the humor. I read The Princess Diaries by William Golding. Um, honestly, people, don't bother with the book. Watch the movie. I gave it one star. Ooh, I, I gave a lot of one stars this month, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Then I read The Passengers by John Mars. I was so excited for this. It's a sci-fi story about uh, self-driving cars that get hacked and then you follow like eight different perspectives of what's gonna happen because the jury can save one person. The book was a hot mess. I was just bored and I, I just didn't like it. So I gave it one star again, you know? Uh, September, month of one star reads. Yeah, I said that William Shakespeare was one of my favorite authors, but I haven't read William Shakespeare in, since high school. So it's been a while. Um, so I read what I thought was my favorite Shakespeare book, which is Romeo and Juliet. I hated it. Big shock. I guess when I first read it, I didn't realize how young Romeo and Juliet were, or I didn't care, but they're 14, 13, I don't even know. I read it recently and I don't even know. They're 13 or 14, which is way too young to be freaking dying for the true love. Then they're star-crossed lovers, which I haven't ever read a different star cross lover so I don't know if I like that or not but then there's insta love which I hate it's be a one star for me again like I said month of one stars all right then I read you by Caroline Kepnes um it was okay I gave it three stars it if you've seen the Netflix series of you, stick with that. I wish I would have. Um, this book had potential, okay? 
it just wasn't executed very well in my opinion. Um, I do love that the narrator, that Joe is talking to you, bringing you into the story. If you've seen the series, you're gonna like the series more. If you haven't seen the series and you're still interested in reading a book about this guy named Joe who is stalking you and then he tries to get a relationship going with you even though he's been stalking you for a while and you have no idea that he's stalking you. Just one that I read was Wish by Barbara O'Connor. So this was a middle grade book. It was really cute. Um, it's about this girl named Charlie who has basically become an orphan, but her aunt and uncle have taken her in, even though she doesn't know them. Like, she never met them before this. So she has to go to a completely different school, move across the country, and she's a big city girl, but now she's in the, living in the country, and everything is just flipped upside down for her. And she finds, when she moves in with her aunt and uncle, they try and welcome her, but she still wants to go home with her mom, and for reasons she can't right away. Uh, but then she finds a dog. A stray dog who her aunt and uncle let her take in and she names him Wish and then it's just kind of like her adjusting to life with Wish. This is Charlie Bean, no Wish. And um, it was just a really cute quick read. I enjoyed it. I gave it five stars and I would recommend it. He's trying to pose for you guys now. Okay, and then I read Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. I was really excited for this book because it's about this woman who goes to sleep every night and when she wakes up she doesn't remember the last 20 years or 25 years of her life. And so you see how she copes with her life and what she does. So you follow her and her husband. Her husband always leaves her messages on the chalkboard telling her what she's supposed to do with her day and what's going on. And then she finds a journal that she has been keeping for the past couple weeks. And it says, don't trust Ben, don't trust him, and Ben is her husband. And then it kind of unravels of what's going on and why you can't trust him, if you can't trust him. But she starts seeing this therapist and she doesn't know if she can believe her husband or the therapist or both, but both are kind of contradicting themselves, so... Mm. I was super excited for this. I thought this would be a five star read. Again, it wasn't. It was average, okay, kind of forgettable, honestly. So it's probably, it was a two star read for me. Uh, I will not be picking it up again. The premise sounds amazing but the execution just was not there. And it dragged on way too long. It wasn't suspenseful or thrilling. It was supposed to be like a suspenseful thriller. It's not a thriller, it's more like a mystery and not even a very good mystery anyways. So yeah, don't read it. Okay, and then staying in tune with disappointing books that I read in September. That's what I should call this video, disappointing books I read in September, because 
honestly, this month was a lot of one and two star books. Probably the worst books I read of the year thus far. Okay, so disappointing book number a million. Okay, I'm exaggerating here. But The Breakdown by B.A. Paris. So I was really excited for this because you follow this girl named Cass who uh, saw a car just stopped in the woods. Well, not in the woods, but there's a shortcut from her home to uh, where she was with her friends. You take this path through the woods in your car and uh, she saw a car just kind of sitting on the side of the road and uh, she stopped but she didn't get out or anything to help this woman that was there and she finds out later that she knew the woman because the woman was murdered that night. And now she lied to her husband about how she didn't take that road home. And now she has to continue to lie to people about where she was or how she didn't take that road, even though she was there. And I was expecting like a high stakes suspenseful thriller yet again. And it was, uh,. disappointing. I didn't like it. Um, there were no plot twists that I didn't see coming. And I can never guess plot twists, okay? I love thrillers because I never know what's going to happen. Um, I gave it two stars. Don't recommend you read it. It's a waste of time. Uh, and I'm going to be unhauling this for sure. Then, I finally got a break from bad reads. I gave this five stars and I actually read it twice back to back uh, because, well, it's a graphic novel. So it's really quick to get through. But look at that art style. So this is called Skyward Volume 1 by Henderson Garbet, Fabella, and Boland. Uh, this is a really interesting read. It's about um, what happens to the Earth if all or most of gravity disappears. I typically love poetry books. This took me like 17 days to read something this freaking small. This is not a bad book. I just think I wasn't in the mood for poetry, so I read Kiss of Broken Glass by Madeline Kudrick. Their story about cutting. Um, so Kina gets caught cutting at school and she has to go into a 72 hour hold. So in a lot of ways, it's like cut. These are kind of similar, but this is a story. This is poetry. Um, I enjoyed Cut More by Patricia McCormick. This one was very much more entertaining. I think I gave this one four stars. This one was only three stars. It's good, but usually when I read poetry, I want something very powerful and something that I can't get out of my head, and this just wasn't it for me. I think I'm actually going to be unhauling this one. Then I read this chunker. It looks like a chunker. Yeah, it's over 500 pages. It's almost like 530 pages. That is The Time Traveler's Wife by Audrey... Niffergeer? I think I butchered that, but by Audrey. Um, I saw the movie a long time ago with Rachel McAdams. Again, watch the movie, don't read the book. If I'm being 
all honesty, I gave it three stars. It's not a bad book. It's a good book. My problems with this book might not be a problem for you. I don't like character-driven books. I like something with lots of plot, action -y and fast pace. This is not fast pace. This is a slow burn. This is very character driven and you get like snippets of Henry and Henry and Claire's life together. You get little snippets at a time because he's a time traveler. So they only get little chunks of time together um, until they kind of merge and you see in real time what's happening. The last book I read in September was uh, one of my used books monthlies. You're going to be surprised that it's not Marley and Me because of my freaking amazing reaction to that. I was going to read Marley and Me, but I didn't want something quite so heavy on my heart. So I read A Bend in the Road by Nicholas Sparks. I enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. Um, so it's not like your typical romance of Nicholas Sparks, you know, like just a she gushy romance. No, it's um, more of like a mystery that has romance in it. So you follow Miles, who is the sheriff of this small town in South Carolina, and he loses his wife, Missy, in a hit-and-run accident. And he it's like two years later, he still is looking for the person that committed the crime. As Sheriff, he thinks it's his duty, and as Missy's husband, he thinks he needs to find this. So now he's a single father to his son, Jonah, and he's just trying to get through life until Sarah comes to town, and uh, she's Jonah's teacher. And then they have, like, this budding romance, but it's not as simple and as fluffy as romances usually are because he's still grieving and he wants to find, he's still looking for the person that killed his first wife, or his wifey, Missy. And then, um, Sarah is just real reeling from a divorce so they both have very interesting backstories that bring them together um the romance was like only okay like i've definitely read other nicholas sparks books a walk to remember a walk to remember uh the notebook that have amazing love stories. This one was like subpar on the romance factor. And I wasn't wanting something that was like gonna hurt my heart, but this was more hard, one of the most hard hitting Nicholas Sparks books I've ever read. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. You know, I gave it four stars. I don't think I will reread this, so I'm gonna unhaul this one. But I think Used Books Monthly did a great job picking this for me. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm just very picky about the things that I reread. I don't reread very often. I'm the kind that likes to read a book once so that I can read every single book in the world. And I know that's never going to happen. I'm never going to be able to read all the books in the world. But a girl can dream, right? Um, so yeah, I'm going to be unhauling it, but I definitely recommend it. Here, I'll show you both the ones that I'm unhauling, but I still highly recommend. They're both really good. I just 
don't reread books often. They have to be really special for me to reread them. But thank you for watching this video with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll have all my social media linked down below. Please like this video and subscribe to me if you want more bookish content in your life.